Well, you and I as corn farmers can't turn on any ag media without hearing the buzzwords of in 2023, inputs are going to go through the roof. And I think back to how you and I have been farming for years, and I can go all the way back to when I was in high school just the other day. And I remember saying, if we can ban nutrients, there has to be a savings. And that is very true. And back in those days, those are the days where we cultivated everything. We were in 30 inch corn, Danish tine 12 row cultivator. And I designed saddle tanks on the row cultivator. And I was welding three quarter inch washers on the back all the way down on the Danish tine units next to the row and putting the feeder hoses and hydrous hoses down and designed a PTO pump and a manifold system so I could put nitrogen on when I was cultivating corn believing that it had to pay. I've heard some really good agronomists say the very same thing. A broadcast would be equal to half of that amount in a band. And there's reasons for that. And I'll never forget the first time I saw Dan Muff's wide drop in Iowa. And I saw those little white hoses dangling next to a standing corn. We were in waist high corn and I saw banding at that time, dragging a hose behind a high boy sprayer and there was something in that and I said, that's something we need to get a hold of. We can improve that applicator and we can take that and change the way we farm. So whether it was back in 2015 or coming in 2023, saving money is a really good concept as long as you and I don't lose yield. So let's jump in and talk about, does a ban really work? And why does it work? And what's wrong with a weed and feed across the board? And let's, let's pick on, on a V3 and a, and a V4 cornfield. And we realize that as this corn is starting to grow, there's a lot of times we talk about an ugly corn syndrome or yellow corn. And we got corn out here that's eight to nine, at the most 10 inches tall. And all of a sudden that corn just goes through a period. And I've had a lot of growers call me and say, Greg, I don't know what's wrong with my cornfield. It's just sitting there. And it's taking a yellow cast to it and it's starting to change. And so as I think about what are the symptoms of this, let's talk about nature. Let's talk about the whole biological system of raising a cornfield. And it starts with many growers would come out and we would do what? We would do a weed and feed, in other words, we would do a weed and feed application of nitrogen and it would be maybe as much as 120 pounds of N. And we would say, well, now we got ourselves in a good position. We made grandma's garden. We got the nitrogen on. We got our seed here. Why is this corn stalled out? And the reason it's stalled out is because we get warmer temperatures. So let's just say we got some 80 degree temps. And we'll pretend and say it's on a Friday afternoon. We got a warm forecast. And we got corn this tall, that's six to eight inches tall. And we got some really warm temperatures coming on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And Monday, we start to talk about, man, that corn doesn't look very good. That corn's struggling. What's going on? Well, what's going on in nature is these guys here. And we really like these guys. These guys are called microbial. And there's a lot of them out there. In a healthy cornfield, there's over 30,000 pounds. Think of that. More than a semi-load of these good guys per acre. And their job is to do what? Break down residue. In a corn on cornfield, they're the guys that create carbon penalty. In other words, all that residue's out there and they're just munching on it. And the fuel that they use is what? Nitrogen. And when they start to use nitrogen as a fuel, and when the temperatures get 80, the population of the good guys explode and they mass produce. And so they're at the buffet table and you broadcast this nitrogen out here and these guys are up in here and they have the munchies and they're going after it and they're depleting the nitrogen that this plant needs to keep in a really active growing state. And so we then coined the phrase, ugly corn syndrome. 
due to the fact that we don't have enough for both. And so when we say a band is worth 2x the broadcast, that's what we mean. Because if we had it banded in here, yes, Mike and his team will hit on the band, but they can't eat it all. And we have a happy corn plant because the root system is able to find enough to do both. Feed and keep Mike going, and also that. And so as we talk about a band's value, and as I watched it through the years, we said, yes, Y-Drop would be an absolute plus, without question. And we've been able to prove that. All through the years, we've done the trials, and there's some astonishing yield increase where we come in and we ban nutrients, nitrogen, next to a growing corn plant. But what about the planter itself? So let's go back to where we're going to come in of a planter. And we're going to say, well, if the planter is going to come in here, and we like what a planter can do, so let's just draw it out here. And it's going to position seed. And its task is what? To position each and every seed. Not only picket fence, but exactly at the same depth. And we say, well, what if we would put nitrogen on with the planter? And I like that concept because it's free. I'm going to run every 30-inch row or every 20-inch row of the field. We're going to be positioning corn. And once we have the seed positioned and we know where it's at, then banding starts to become really, really efficient. And so for 360, it was what would it take to make a planter attachment to be the ultimate for a planter? And so we started to work on banding. And Bandit is a product that's out there. And for a product to be really successful, it's got to be simple, very cost effective, but have performance on the backside. And so it started, but what does a corn plant like? What makes a really happy young seedling? And so as we thought through it, we said, well, we know that anything we add to the row unit could possibly do harm. We talked about it for years at Precision Planning. I get the engineers in a room and I say, whatever we're going to design, it can do no harm. Because if we're sure, we don't want a grower to go backwards. And so we said, and the industry is out there saying what? Deep nitrogen might be the answer. At 360, we took the opposite approach. We said, well, let's work with nature. We know that if we come in, that nitrogen moves with water. Totally different than phosphorus. And we said, well, what if? What, first of all, we answered the question, where would we want to be positioning wise? And for Greg, I'm wanting to put on 80 pounds of N with my planter. And of course, we're also going to put some sulfur in with that. And so we said, well, where would we want to be positioned? We said, well, let's be three inches on each side of this seed. We want to be far enough away with salt content would never become a question. And it was something that would fit inside the closing system and in right behind the opening disc but let's make it so that it's simple and effective. But we decided not to go down here in what I call in the deep zone because that would take too much downforce. Let's use nature. And so we said, well, how, how deep should we put it underground? A lot of guys are doing what? They're just dribbling nitrogen behind the closing wheel. Some guys don't even drag a chain, and that makes me nervous. If you're going to just run through a stainless steel tube behind the closing wheels, nitrogen on top of the ground, I'd for sure like to see a cover of a chain. You're a lot of risk of losing it. But we said, what if we come in here and we're just going to put it three quarters of an inch deep in a band? So in this case for Greg, I got 40 pounds on each side. And we're going to do what? We're going to let nature take it down with moisture. So as this nitrogen gets into, into moisture, it starts to migrate down. And we understand how a young corn plant grows. That young corn plant is going to set on a crown three quarters of an inch below the ground. And it's going to put out crown root one and crown root two early in its life. We know they grow down at a 35 degree angle because that's the way God created corn. And so as this crown starts to put out these, young, these first roots and they're small, we want them to grow right through that nitrogen band of nitrogen that's migrating down through the profile. 
And we didn't want to put a lot of downforce requirement on that row unit. And so we're going to put them at three inches over and three quarter inch just under the surface. And we're going to let nature work with us. Versus coming out and requiring a deep band where now we're taking a lot of downforce to keep that row unit in a very consistent inch and three quarter all the way across the field. So this begs the question, if I'm going to require my planter, tractor, and planter to carry some kind of liquid, and I'm going to have to stop occasionally and fill, because if Greg's saying he's putting on 80 pounds of N and six gallon ammonia sulfate, what's he carrying? He's carrying 30 gallon per acre. But we've seen a tremendous response versus the broadcast. What I'm able to do with 80 pounds of N compared to 140 pounds of the 28, 32 on top and worked in is dramatically different. Because no longer am I worried about the microbials coming in here and eating all the surface in and having a very, very sad young corn plant. Because of my band, yes, they'll come and eat part of it but we're going to stay in a really good state of green corn and working it through. Does the yield follow it? Yes. I'm excited to see. For the oh, last five to six years, we've done the yield trials. Anywhere on corn following soybeans in that six to eight bushel response over a weed and feed broadcast when we do a band. Corn on corn, quite a different story. In that 12 to 16 bushel response, nothing more than banning it versus broadcast. And in the six to seven dollar corn market we're in, this is Greg following that concept. I really like it. But at the same time, it begs the question to say, well, if the nitrogen needs to be banded, what are other things that we can help with? Well, obviously, for years, we've said we need starter fertilizer in your program. And so we think about starter. And I've worked with it for, oh my, well over, now what, 35 years? And I'm a huge proponent of it. I think starter fertilizer pays every time. I would tell you there's 12 to 15 bushel response to starter over the last 35 years of tests that we've done. And is it every year a golden ticket? Probably not. But this would be the average over all those years. What are some of the things that we've been able to prove that just absolutely work? Well, one is starter needs to be banded, and it needs to be below the seed. And as close to the seed as you can get without being on it. I'll just tell you, that's, if you and I are just going to get down the brass tacks, what is a corn plant like? That's where it's at. And over the years with lots of different applicators and trials, we are able to prove that this is really where we want to be. A tough spot to work. So at 360, we said, let's jump into this and let's get growers starting to use more and more starter. Not only is there a yield to starter, but there's usually what? Five to seven days quicker maturity and usually one and a half percent drier corn on moisture. So these are things that make all of us smile, and there's dollars here. But once again, it's a challenge of saying, well, what should we build? And so at 360, we designed a system called WAVE. Now, WAVE is a two, it's got two very strong functions. At the same time, I said we need to position starter absolutely where it needs to be. We also need to design the absolute best closing system from the bottom up, not from the top down. Top down is just a real challenge. And there's all kinds of multiple stage now of airbags and electronics. I smile because if we can design an applicator that's going to put starter really, really close. In other words, we're going to be within what? A quarter inch under the seed and we're going to be no further than three quarters of an inch away. And at the same time, it's going to be a closing system that I'm all in. And I love the response that we've got from that. But it still has the question of growers saying, well, wait a minute, Greg, a starter program could be as much as $45 in 2023 spring. And that's right. 
it is extremely expensive. So what would be the options? So we started working on it several years ago on a project called Dash, where we come in, let's just draw the seeds here, and you would normally put in a continuous band of starter from fence row to fence row. And we said, no, no, let's ban the band. In other words, let's come in and just put a dash of product and nothing in between here in the no man's land. There's no need to put any kind of starter in between here. Let's position it only beside the seed, whether that's a three inch dash or a two inch dash versus the continuous. And the response has been really exciting. On our farm, we use the two inch dash, which is two thirds less dollars spent with the same or more yield year in and year out. Same wing for the three inch, which is 50% savings on the starter product. This is two thirds of the savings. And so I like these kind of numbers. That works really well for me. So we design a system that gets it right close to the seed. A very, very quick uptake bar none, the best in the industry. We get the closing effect. What am I looking for there? One more ear per every thousandth of an acre, okay? What's that equal? Seven bushel? That's what a normal in the Midwest, every ear is worth seven bushel to you. So I said, I want to raise more corn with more yield, and I want to save dollars. So that's the abandoned story that we work on really, really hard. And we're proving it out and it's available out there and I'm excited as I watch it run. And then what? We're doing what? So we've done this at planting time. So we can write it out here. Greg's got 80 pounds of N on, he's got his sulfur on, and he's got a corn plant here that's growing. He's got the first radical root right into the starter band. He's got nitrogen, the crown coming down. He's got nitrogen migrating down. Things in a really good state at this point. But we know what? We need more to finish the race. How much more? Well, the industry says what? 1.1 pounds of N equals one bushel for a goal. A lot of guys will say 250 bushel corn goal, 250 pounds of N. Man, I cringe when I think of a guy going out and putting on that much in hydrus 10 months before harvest. I've never understood it. If you tell me you're out and you're saying, well, Greg, it's November 1st and we're going to come in of ammonia and we're going to put on, and let's just pick a number, 240 pounds of N. I cringe. What about all the middle ground till September 30th of next year? The what ifs. What if happens in here? What if we have a lot of rain? Two weeks ago here, it was 76 degrees. And hydrous bars and tanks were running all up and down our country roads. And I'm just like, guys, what are we doing? And I'm questioning this. And so I'd much rather say, let's put some on it planning, and then we're going to wait. And we're going to wait for what? We're going to see what nature does. How much rain are we going to get? How much heat are we going to get? What kind of stands do we have? What kind of ear count? Have we ever seen a better ear count? across the Corn Belt in 2022 than this year? Never. Why? We come out of the gate in a perfect stride. The best I've ever seen. And in central Illinois, we didn't have any massive rain. The reason we had record yields is because we went from fence row corner to fence row corner with absolutely every plant performing due to the fact we didn't have the washouts and we didn't have the four inch rains and the three inch rains. So we're waiting to see what's going to happen. What are we really waiting on? This little guy. We're saying to this little guy, what are you going to give us for free? We know he can create as much as 80 to 100 pounds of nitrogen for free if he's going to do that. And so my normal program is 180 pounds of N total. Between wide drop, the planter, and the starter program, and last year's fall plow to, plow down, we're looking at 180 pounds. And that's going to raise us 250 bushel corn. Now, we got the ability to change. This year I come in and put more on than 180 because I saw my yields were going from 250 up to 280 plus. And so I said, in a $7 corn market, 
I'm not going to get cheap here. And so I had the choice with Y drop. Because Y drop gives you the choice to come in and position nitrogen late season, much later than even shirt high or shoulder high corn. You can come in at the Hagee and you can be putting on a week before pollination, you can be put on your last pass of nitrogen. So I loved being able to wait because it translates to dollars. No longer are we in the 1.1. Our goal at 360 is to be in the 0.7 or less of nitrogen to equal one bushel. So if we put 180 on on a 250 goal, that's a 0.7 club, that's where we want to play. If nature's going to give us more for free and we can get by with less than 0.7, I'm all in. And so we go into 23, yes, we got our nitrogen bought, we got it on hand, we put it to fill our tanks in August, it's the highest I've ever had to put in. But at the same time, I'm going to go for as much yield as I can possibly get at the most efficient rate that I possibly can. And I'm going to work with these guys. I'm going to work with the herd that's out there. So we've come a long ways since when I was 20 years of age and I was designing welded washers behind a Danish tine and putting nitrogen on besides a V6 corn plant. But the concept's still the same at the right place, at the right time, drives yields clear to the top.